yeah, essentially, um, this kind of section is to talk about machine learning and really the art of the possible, especially, you know, we're all here because we have an interest in data analytics and data science and what we can actually do with that. So <laughs> I saw this interesting article about, you know, where we're going to be next year and in five years and 10 years when we talk about machine learning and what we're doing with it. And I think, you know, thinking ahead after 2022, there's going to be two kinds of people, those who routinely and effectively use AI and machine learning and those who don't. And to put it nicely, those who do embrace AI and embrace machine learning are going to be equipped with this almost superhuman productivity. You know, there's so much potential that we can unlock by using computers and help or using them to help us in our day to day activities. You know, how can we drive productivity? How can we drive change? How can we get the best results possible in the most efficient and effective way? And there's so many emerging technologies that we can use that are open source. And I think one of the kind of takeaways from this is that attending the hacks and being a part of, you know, the project data analytics community just really helps you to embrace that change and unlock all those skills that you need and even being part of the apprenticeship you know you are driving the change to help your organization be better so it's about really being open-minded to where we can go with these technologies so in our changing industry i think there's a few points that that we really need to consider you know never forget what you're really selling what is your organization trying to do what's the end goal you need to be willing to adapt those who aren't are going to miss out on all the amazing potentials of AI and machine learning and, and data science. And the client driven approach always wins. So change is inevitable. You know, we have to be open minded. We have to embrace all these new technologies that are out there. And even if you're kind of on the fence and you're thinking, oh, I like machine learning. I like data analytics, but I'm just not sure how to tap into that. You're in the best place possible, you know especially with the apprenticeship, if you're thinking, you know, what can I do? How can I gain these skills to really push those boundaries? Then this is the right place for you to be. So we just have to be open minded and embrace this change. And I think um, the blockbuster versus Netflix example will always be one that's quite predominant. You know, I used to love going to blockbuster. It was a great Friday night for me going to Woolworths to get my sweets. And then I go to blockbuster back in the day <laughs> so yeah we really have to be aware of these kind of case studies and how blockbuster were, were very limited you know they had this business model which wasn't working and they were not receptive to change they were not receptive to where the industry was going and, and what they could do to best themselves and netflix were doubted at the beginning for, for, a, for a very long time you know no one saw the future of, of online streaming and um, all the cloud capabilities. So Netflix kind of took this approach where we need to change the way we're doing things to keep up with, you know, our customers and keep up with the way the world is going. And now they're hugely successful, you know, one of the biggest companies really in terms of entertainment. So it really is about being open minded to what we can do, where we can go. And that's kind of where the art of machine learning really comes in, because it is it can be an immensely complex topic, but it's how we get to that point where we can really build our skills and utilize them is where we see the beauty in it. You know, that's the art of it, embracing these skills and embracing that knowledge in order to take our organizations or, you know, even for personal development, you want to push it to the next level. So. This is a good case study to keep in mind if you're ever thinking, I'm not so sure about this, you know, open your mind, be receptive to, to all the changes that are going on and what we can do with them. So just a little bit of background then for those of you who may be a bit unfamiliar with machine learning and AI. Essentially, we are feeding lots and lots of data, which, you know, we deal with on a day to day basis, don't we? We're sat on a gold mine of, of big data, really. And we're feeding that into our computer systems in order to help our computers make decisions. So we're developing a series of algorithms 
using this software to make decisions with minimal human intervention. So essentially, we're building those technical skills to help support us in kind of our day to day roles and productivity. And there's lots and lots of benefits to, to doing it this way. And I guess in general, machine learning and AI are, are mostly used to automate and improve decision making processes. So we'll look at in a minute, you know, the scope of this, because it's not just limited to one industry or one job role. This is really applicable to to everybody. And it's kind of like what I was saying before, we all have to be kind of open minded to the future of data analytics and where it's going and, and embrace these skills to make, you know, all of our jobs um, much better. You know, we can work more effectively when we're using computers as almost like a partner. You know, it's not nothing to be scared of. It's nothing to be intimidated about. We're using this to benefit all of us because some of the tasks are almost impossible or extremely difficult for humans to do on their own. So we're using this technology to help us, not to hinder us. So one of the biggest benefits then is this improved decision making and machine learning algorithms. So your step by step sets of instructions can help organizations make those better and more accurate decisions, which is immensely valuable. You know, if you think of your current role and, and where you're at, um, I'm sure you'll you'll agree with me that if you can be helped in making decisions, then that's you know hugely beneficial. Um, and this obviously helps organizations to improve overall performance. So just one of the benefits of, of utilizing machine learning and AI. Increased efficiency is another big one um, that you know I'm, I'm very keen to kind of delve into, but essentially these processes of automating and streamlining tasks helps to free up time and resources for other activities. So if you're sat here and you're on the apprenticeship and you've thought, ah, oh, that power automate module, you know, I wish I'd had it before because all those emails that I had to send manually now just sort themselves out. It's amazing, you know, but it's really about embracing the change with machine learning, what we can do with it. And freeing up that time and, and allowing room for more resources or, or more time to dedicate to other tasks because it's immensely beneficial. You know, it's much more productive. It's more efficient. And, you know, we can accomplish more with less, which is, you know, amazing for any organization. Enhanced customer service. So essentially machine learning algorithms, um, especially when we look at sentiment analysis. So um, really digging into customer feedback, you know, giving that textual data a score for if it's positive, neutral or negative or using other natural language processing techniques can really help us dig into that textual data. So, for example, customer data and really help us provide those personalized recommendations and support. So essentially we can use machine learning algorithms to help build that brand loyalty and that overall customer experience, which I think is critical for any organization. You know, we we want the best results. How can we do that without having somebody manually go through all the textual data? You know, that'd be a nightmare. <laughs> you imagine one person just sat reading all the reviews. Um, we can help or use machine learning to do that much quicker and more effectively. So um customer service and enhanced customer ex experience and service is really something that machine learning algorithms can help us achieve. And improve prediction. So this is another big one that I think, especially like I so said, if you've been on the apprenticeship, you'll know that that predictive analysis is really important for lots of different um, organizations across many different industries and also for many different roles. So essentially we can use predictive analysis using machine learning algorithms to make accurate predictions about future events. So there's lots and lots of scope, um, you know, whether you're looking at financial data, whether you're looking at how successful a project may be in the future, there's lots of scope to help organizations prepare for potential challenges and opportunities. And essentially one of the best things about data analytics is the ability to make those really informed business decisions and machine learning really plays a crucial part in allowing us to access those decisions in a way which humans can't. So we've got to embrace it. It allows for more pr productivity 
and allows us to make those predictions that might have gone missed if you had a human doing it as well. Saving. So you'll all love this one. We love to save a bit of money, but essentially by automating and streamlining our tasks and processes, machine learning essentially allows us to reduce labour costs and, and other expenses. So we're using these machine learning algorithms. We're embracing this technology, which is ultimately going to save us in the future. And, and there's so many different technologies out there, which we'll have a look at that are open source. You know, they're free to use. So we have to embrace it. We have to build those skills in order to help our organisations be more productive and get better results. And everyone loves to save a bit of money. So it's always a bonus. So a couple of examples there of where um, machine learning has been used in some really beneficial ways. These are a couple of, um, well, I'll show you another example, uh, which is very construction based. But I always find it you know, immensely intriguing how different industries use machine learning um, to make these incredible decisions. So this is an example of um, deep learning, so a type of machine learning um, that's made it possible to reliably detect, which is important, we don't want it to be unreliable, um, a wide variety of, of protective equipment on a construction site. So you can see here from the image, it can detect hard hats and um, high visibility jackets, ear protectors and so forth. So the more training this model has, the higher the capacity for AI to identify safety equipment or the absence of it will only grow. So we can see that we have quite an effective algorithm here that's detecting that equipment. So hugely beneficial. You don't have to have somebody walking around the construction site, you know, checking to see if somebody's got the hard hat on. AI does it for us. So it saves a lot of time and um, saves that kind of manual labor of somebody having to do that. And, you know, it's just cost effective as well. So it's amazing the technologies um, that are out there to support us. And another one, a kind of similar one, um, which I find really interesting, the infrastructure asset inspection. Can you imagine somebody kind of manually walking around and having to identify all the cracks and you know, broken items in, a, you know, a construction site or in designing architecture, it's incredibly hard to achieve. And this is kind of where I'm highlighting that machine learning can help support us and, you know, get those amazing results. So um, human assessment, really, if you're just looking from the naked eye, has a tendency to be inconsistent and unreliable, which is obviously not what we want especially you know if you're looking at the construction industry as a whole you want it to be safe you want it to be productive you want it to be reliable but computer vision and machine learning helps support human inspectors so we're not saying you know take away those roles or anything like that or the the classic case of robots taking over um which is i know a big argument when we think about machine learning and um, it's there to support us in making more objective assessments which is you know, immensely valuable, saves a lot of time and gives you the best results possible. And just some other examples then of where we can use construction and machine when machine learning and, and some types of projects that we could look at. And if you're an apprentice and you're sat here thinking of some project ideas, these might, you know, spark some inspiration, which would be really good. But you know, analysis of cost data to improve cost estimation and project planning is a viable project. Um, analysis of safety data to improve safety on job sites and using spatial analysis to identify potential risks and hazards on a job site are all very viable projects. So there's lots and lots of scope, um, you know, within the construction industry of where you can use predictive analysis, machine learning, AI, to help improve that productivity and get those best results. And if you're thinking, I'm not in construction, so that is irrelevant to me. There are some um, ideas here of projects that you could have a look at, you know, analysis of sales data to identify trends and improve marketing strategies is a really good one. Um, analysis of financial data to identify patterns and improve decision making. And also analysis of social media data to understand customer sentiment, so opinion, feelings and preferences, which is obviously hugely beneficial when you're looking at improving um, your brand reputation and getting the best for your customers. So 
there's lots and lots of scope of using machine learning in projects you know that are all very viable to any organization across any industry it's all about you know equipping everybody with the skills to access these types of projects so really that's what the apprenticeship is here for it's here to support you in gaining these skills in order to help your organization to make these better decisions so you know equip yourself with the skills this is where the future is it's amazing it's an incredibly inspiring and motivating um, industry to be in um, and we just have to you know get the tools to create these amazing projects so some of the tools and technologies that are out there these are not all of them um, but these are kind of the main ones that we cover on the apprenticeship and ones that I definitely recommend looking at if you're interested in machine learning, which I hope we all are. <laughs> um, but OpenAI is a good one. Um, open source, lots of interesting technology they're working on with OpenAI, which I'll show you in a second. Orange 3, this little uh, looks very cheeky looking orange grinning at us. Um, orange 3 is a great one for getting introduced to machine learning. Python, if you're feeling a little bit more techy and want to work on your programming, lots of different libraries in there to support machine learning. Power BI and also Excel. I feel like everybody forgets about Excel. There is still a use for it. You can still do machine learning with Excel, so, so don't forget about it. It's still very valuable. But there's lots and lots of tools um, out there that you can use. So if you're sat there thinking, you know, I'm in a role or I'm in an organization and I I only have access to Excel, it's still possible for you to work on these amazing projects. So there's no limitations, really. We can all access this, gain the skills and work on these amazing projects. So I guess following on from OpenAI, and, and if you're on LinkedIn, you've probably seen this huge kind of spark um, for chat GPT. And I have to be honest with you, it's it's life changing. It's honestly amazing. If you haven't signed up and have a look at it yet, I would definitely, definitely recommend uh, doing that. They're calling it the new and improved Google, um, which I can kind of get behind. I know poor old Google. Um, we thought there would never be anything better, but I think chat GPT definitely uh, gets in there. So Vicky with the love heart. Yeah, it is amazing. You, you should definitely take a look at it if you haven't already. But essentially, OpenAI have trained this um, model called ChatGPT, which interacts in a, in a very humanistic uh, conversational way. If you've ever been in any of my sessions on the apprenticeship, you'll kind of get the vibe that I do love a chatbot. I just I just love them. I know they're really old, but this is like a new and improved chatbot. And essentially, the chatbot for GPT has been develop so it can have those conversations with you in a really humanistic way it can admit its mistakes which is arguably a little bit creepy but it can do that it can um challenge incorrect premises and reject any inappropriate requests so it's it's amazing it really doesn't seem like you're talking to a bot it seems like you're talking to a human which is both incredible and, and very intimidating as well so it's an amazing piece of um, machine learning AI technology and this is just an example of how it works so I typed in a question can you suggest some data analysis project ideas for HR so it's a question that sometimes comes up on the apprenticeship you know can it generate ideas so all you do is you type in your question you let it have a think because I know it doesn't have a brain but I like to think it's doing the the calculations in the background and you can ask it anything you want. You can even just have a conversation with it if you really want to. And you can see it takes no time at all to respond in a very logical, clear way. It's not a, it's not chaotic. It's very easy to understand. And it's churning out lots and lots of projects um, surrounding data analysis for HR. So it's very specific. It's scraped all that data. It has an exceptional knowledge base. And I know this is going to be very helpful for any apprentices sat here thinking I'm struggling with project ideas. Here you go. I'm helping you out a little bit, guys. Um, but yeah, you can see that you can use it for almost anything. And I think it's about embracing this technology and using it to, to help um, you in your role. So one thing I saw on LinkedIn, which was amazing, was that um, 
there was a lady who was saying it can literally create job adverts in two seconds. It takes away all that time that I'd usually spend, you know, typing up the job adverts, checking it, seeing if it's right, seeing if it sounds OK. She can just pop in the details into um, chat GPT. It churns out this response. All she has to do is go through and maybe correct it and amend a couple of things. But it's such a time saver. And I think chat GPT really highlights the way we're going with AI and machine learning. And I think it's just really important to embrace it, get behind it, understand that machine learning and AI is not here to take over. It's here to make us better. And the sooner we start embracing that, the sooner we start using these technologies and learning the skills to develop technologies like these and help us in our projects, um, the more efficient and the more productive um, we can be in our roles and as an organisation kind of holistic overview. So, yeah, so essentially I'm all about embracing machine learning and AI. It's definitely a, an incredibly innovative area. And, you know, especially even if you're thinking, I'm not quite sure I want to start with the technical stuff. The ethics behind it is so intriguing. And, you know, it's it's these arguments I keep talking about, you know, are robots taking over and so forth. But it's such an, an amazing area to explore. And I think, you know, these technologies are not here to hinder us. They're here to help us improve our decision making. Um, you know, it can help us to provide really accurate data that that may go missed by a human. Um, we can improve our efficiency and productivity. Um, we can use large, large amounts of data, you know, big, big data quickly and accurately. And it's also the idea of getting a bit of a competitive advantage. You know, it allows you to have that unique capability that may set you apart from another organization. So, you know, keep in mind that blockbuster, blockbuster, blockbuster versus Netflix example. And, and do you want to be blockbuster or do you want to be Netflix? You know, we've got to pave the way in, in bettering ourselves and using this technology to help us. So yeah, essentially um, the kind of point of this session really was to just highlight the importance of machine learning um, we can use computers to help improve our performance on specific tasks. We can automate, we can streamline processes, we can make better and more accurate decisions. And it just has a huge heap of benefits. And it really is, like I've said here, that the potential to revolutionise many different industries and organisations and give you that foot in the door of paving the way using these technologies. So think it's important not to be intimidated by this, but to embrace it. And, you know, if you're thinking I'd like to do the apprenticeship and I want to gain these skills, then, you know, please do get in touch with us, have a chat. If you're thinking I've got a team and I, I want them to get in on this, then this is where we're going. This is the future. And, you know, just in terms of the basics and, and getting that advantage and, and being part of the future rather than kind of stuck on the sidelines just watching everybody else succeed. So I guess this leads me on a little bit to talking about projecting success as a whole and, and what we have to offer really. Um, so we do offer the training and development, you know, we do have the apprenticeship, we do have short courses. If you're interested in sending, you know, your team on a Power BI intensive course or, you know, looking at machine learning possibly, then we can offer that as well. If as kind of the more technical side and data consultancy um, with our incredible tech team. So not only can we help you with develop your solutions, um, but we can also help you with your training. So definitely open to lots of opportunities here. And if you are interested in the apprenticeship, um, you can scan this QR code here, you can have a look at our LinkedIn um, and our website and have a look at what we have to offer and how you can get involved in that. Um, like I said, it definitely is the future and these skills are, are immensely valuable. So learning them now will will set you apart. You know, you'll be part of that change. You'll be part of that future surrounding data analytics. And um, it's better to do it now than get stuck and, and leave it for later when you'll be forced to do it. So do have a look at this um, and get involved.
And we do have our lovely badges. They're so cute. Um, so yeah, a bit of a cutesy moment with the badges. But essentially, every time you complete a module on the apprenticeship, you'll be given a badge and you can post this on your LinkedIn, showcase your skills, show what you're learning, you know, show people that you work with, your line manager and so forth, that these are what you're accomplishing. So there's lots and lots of different modules here. It's not all just about machine learning, although that is a big part of it. You know, it's all about programming, data visualization, um, data modeling, data security, all these key concepts that will really help you to drive your business forward um, and also just help with your personal and professional development. So it's not just a, a one trick pony. You won't just learn about Power BI. You learn about all different types of environments and software that is really going to help you be part of this change and in this data driven world that we now live in and, and you know, embrace that change. You know, you're going to be part of Netflix, not Blockbuster. And one nice kind of um, point to touch on, we do also have badges for the events. So if you're an apprentice and you've been to an event um, such as the hack, you will get sent a little badge that you can show off um, to show that you are a project data hacker. You know, you've been involved um, and definitely show it off on LinkedIn and so forth because it is a huge achievement. And I, I know lots of you are sat here today and you, you've been a part of the most recent hack and, and taken part in those challenges. And I think it's it's worth noting it's just such an amazing achievement to go to these events and to really practice your skills and, and network and work with other people and you know you should feel immensely proud of yourself for for developing these solutions and being part of this data-driven change so yeah huge pat on the back to everyone who's kind of attended the hack um and you know develop those solutions and I guess this is where I will leave you, Jake. So I hope that everyone kind of enjoyed that little machine learning <laughs> talk. Um, definitely get involved and please do reach out if you are interested in, you know, joining the apprenticeship. Um, and yeah, hope I see you there.